Hey guys, in uh, this video what I'm going to do is to demonstrate how to convert a uh, program in a DX9100 from using one analog output to using two analog outputs. Uh, this is a uh, continuation of uh, some projects that we have been doing as far as replacing some older pneumatic controls. Uh, this system was originally designed to use a single output from the DX9100 that would then control an electro pneumatic transducer that would regulate the air pressure that is sent to uh, two pilot positioners. Those two pilot positioners were then staged mechanically to operate the two valves. Uh, and now in this instance, we're going to be replacing those pneumatic valves with electronic valves. I've done a couple of other videos talking about this very topic. The difference between this one is uh, that we are actually going to be using two of the outputs instead of another one that I did on the DX9100. We actually took a single output and spread it out to three outputs. And the reason that I wanted to do one that uh, shows some of the similar steps is in case there is someone out there who is doing a project where they need to split uh, the control program to actually control two outputs instead of having just a single output you would be able to follow along with a lot of what is in this video and uh, you know, accomplish your project hopefully. Uh, so that's basically what this video is about. Uh, you know like I say I've done others on the DX9100s showing how to do it with them as well as using the controller configuration tool. Now this project again we are replacing steam valves. Uh, we had two four inch steam valves that were old archaic pieces of equipment. Uh, they were you know, past their service life. It was time for them to be replaced so we decided to go ahead and upgrade them to a newer generation of electronic control. Here is the original output going to the electro pneumatic transducer. This is what we're going to be replacing and we're going to be reusing the original output. The first step is to upload the control program. Here I am connected directly to the DX9100 using my cable and I need to determine the exact address of that device. So the way that you can do that in Metasys is to look at your network under the All Items tab, pull over the particular controller that you're going to be working with, and uh, then click on the Hardware tab. And that will reveal to you the device address. And once I click here, you can see it there. It is NetPoint address 5. That address is uh, very important to what we're going to be doing. I'm going to open the GX9100 software and use it to upload the control program directly from the DX. You will click the action tab and then select upload. You will then select DX from the tab here and you will select your COM port and then enter the correct device address which for this controller once again is 5. Once you press OK, you're going to see your mouse begin to spin. It's going to take this a few minutes before the actual program will appear in your window. I am editing out some of the time period that it takes for this program upload, but do not be discouraged if uh, you think that nothing is happening, because I assure you that it is. It just takes a little bit of time for the system to pull the program out of that DX. It does not give you any kind of an indication other than the spinning mouse uh, to let you know that it is working. It would be nice if there was some type of a percentage that it showed you in this window, but unfortunately that is something that they do not include in this software. And, you know, once again, I'm editing some of it out, but not much. I mean, it does take a few minutes for the program to appear. So, once again, do not be discouraged. And here we are. Upload is complete, and this is the program that we will be modifying for our system. 
the first step that I want to do is to save this file. I want to create a couple of copies of it. I want to create an original copy of it if you don't already have a backup copy. And then I want to create a copy for us to work with. Always make sure that you do not work on your original program, that you make a backup copy under a different name that uh, you're working with. That way, if something does happen, you can at least go back to your original program that is running. So give it an appropriate name, something that uh, you are familiar with, something that is related to the system that you are working with, uh, you, you know, that you can easily identify. That is highly recommended that you save multiple copies of that. Also, don't forget to correctly set the jumpers for the additional output that you are adding with your system. Okay, here is uh, one of the valves that we are adding. This is a four inch valve. You can see the actuator here. You can see the valve that it's piped in. You can see that we're pretty much ready to go mechanically. Now this valve, once it gets within the system, we will need to test it to make sure that it isn't leaking or anything like that. Here we are within our GX9100 software. What we need to do now is to drill down and find the program copy that we are going to be working with. Once again, work with a copy and not the original. We can see the logic here uh, of our program. We're going to trace so we can see exactly where they, uh, the output that we're currently using goes and you know we are going to look at the data you can see here that this is an indication of the connection point for that output we can also see that there is an output forcing this being a steam valve we want to ensure that the steam valve does not open unless we have proven status on our hot water pump and because it's you do not want to flow steam in a system unless you you, you prove that status here we're going to break the connection for the PID loop, but we are going to leave the connection for the output forcing. So we highlight that, select disconnect. It's going to ask us if that's what we want to do. Yes, we're going to do, we're going to disconnect it. And now we are going to modify our program. We're going to have to add a logic block to this, which will split the output from that PID loop. Uh, this is a very easy step. This is something that you know, it's not very hard to do. Just follow along with us here. We're going to select a four segment block. Drop down your window here. We highlight that. We drag that four segment block out onto our screen where we can work with it. And this is what is going to be controlling both of those outputs. Now then, we're going to be using two of the channels within this logic block. It contains a total of four, but we are going to be using only two of them. The first channel is going to control our original one-third valve output. It was originally just a single output. It is now going to be the one-third valve output, which, uh, you know, in this system. It's our first valve. We want this system to control that first output from 0 to 50 percent of the output of that PID loop. And once that PID loop reaches 50 percent, we want the output itself to be at 100 percent. We want to have a full 10 volts going from the first output to our valve. Now that is a critical step in making this work correctly. You've got to make sure that you have the correct information here. You can see how each of these values are set up here. The blocks to the left are the outputs from the PID and the blocks to the right are the what the output is actually going to do. And you must enter those correctly or it will not work. Channel 2, we want it controlling our second output from 50% to 100% of the output of the PID loop. Once again, this is our second output. 
going from uh, once that PID loop reaches 50% and above, it is going to drive that second output from 0 to 100% of its output. It will put the uh, voltage out. It will not generate any kind of an output unless we reach at least 50% from that PID loop. Clicking in this window here, we are going to make our connection to that PID loop. We press the Shift 8 button. That's our asterisk button. We hit that and it brings us up this window. From this window, we will then select the correct PID loop that we need to connect to. Here is our PID loop and this is the particular point within that PID loop that we want to connect to. You must make sure that you connect to the right point or it will not work correctly. And once we press OK, we do the same thing down here for channel 2. We highlight it, press Shift 8 again, it brings up our pop-up window. We select our PID loop and the connection point. Once we have that, we can press OK. The next step in this process is, of course, going to be connecting our outputs to that four-channel sequencer. We are now looking at the second output. Here, you must configure the type of output it's going to be. If you do not select the correct one, it will not work. We have this selected to a 1, which is a 0 to 10 volt output. And you can see here, now we are looking at our first output. And you can see that it is already configured for a 0 to 10 volt output. You can see the output forcing down there that uh, ensures that the valve does not open unless we see pump status. We're not really going to get into the PLC portion of that in this video, but uh, that is what that does. Now we are going to click inside of our connection point, our origin point. We're going to find that four segment that we added, and we are going to grab channel one since this is the first valve that we will be using. This is the first, you know, first output that we're modifying, that we're reusing basically. And we now have that uh, connected. Here is our output forcing again. Remember exactly which one that is because we want to copy that in our second output. Now we are going to select our second output. We're going to select data and of course make sure that we are set to a 0 to 10 volt output. We are going to make sure that we connect our output forcing as well as our control block for this output. So we're going to click in here and we are going to select our LRS 1 to 32 because once again you know we need to connect this for the output forcing as well is this inverted yes it is we do not want that valve to open unless there is proven status on that hot water pump now that our output forcing is connected we need to also connect this output to the other channel within that four segment logic block that we added. Uh, we highlight in this block here, we click in there, press our shift eight, the asterisk again. We then go and find that block that we added and this time we're gonna grab channel two. And that will connect this output to the other section of that sequencer. Once again, 0 to 50 percent will control the first valve to 0 to 100 percent of its output. From 50 percent to 100 percent on the PID loop will control the second valve from 0 to 100 percent on its output. That's basically, that's our first steps. Now we need to get everything wired up. We have it here. It's not cleaned up very well. Since this is a three-wire valve, you need to make sure that you connect both to your power supply, your common, as well as your analog output common. And then also connect to your AC source, as well as the analog outputs from your DX9100. The white wire that is uh, in my hand is one of the outputs and the black wires are going to the analog output common as well as jumpered over to our AC common for this particular device. And here we are at the valve itself. We have our 
hot wire, our positive 24 volts. We have our common wire that is both AC common as well as our analog output common. And then we have our signal wire, which is our 0 to 10 volts DC that will actually drive the valve. Once again, after everything is wired up, be sure to test the system. Here we are stroking the valve. It's quite slow. If you have ever worked with one of these valve actuators, you know that they do not move quickly, but you can see that there is movement in this valve uh, when we do change the output. Once again, uh, the output is 0 to 100%. Is controlled by that PID loop. We're just testing it, so we're just testing it with an override on our system. Guys, I hope the video is useful to you. This, again, is a uh, project that can be a little bit of a challenge if uh, you have not got a lot of experience in this type of program modifications. However, as you have seen in the video, following some basic steps, you should be able to get through it. Once again, always remember, do not work on your original copy of the program. You must make a separate copy, and just in case something happens, you can always go back to your original program and uh, get you back up and running in many instances. Anyways, guys, hope you liked the video. I would appreciate it if you would give it a thumbs up. Leave me any comments down below, and thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.